Welcome Libra to your in-depth monthly forecast for June 2024 for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon on the screen now. I'm showing the event chart as the month begins. This provides some vital information to guide us. Now, we always need to be mindful of each zodiac sign's ruler. So Venus. Venus, your ruler, is in a glorious alliance with the sun as this month begins. You can see there's only one degree between them. And over the first two weeks, they're within three degrees. Now that's really, really powerful. Also, Venus is going to inform the new moon on the 6th. We've had a lot of challenging lunations in recent years. A lot of them have seen to be in, have been affected by Uranus or Saturn. But this one gives a real sense of uplift. But let's think about the host. The host is Gemini, which of course is an air sign like you. But there's another connection to your sign because look at the position of the sun. It's 11 degrees. Therefore, it's just moved into the second decan of the sign of Gemini, which is subroad by Venus. So there's a very Venusian vibe as this month begins. The ninth house can be about long distance travel, it can be about opening up our horizons, can be about higher education, philosophy, but of course it can also be about vacations. And Venus, through its rulership of your sign, is about relating, but the rulership of Venus through Taurus is about money. So how do we interpret the blend of the Sun and Venus at the start of this month? Well, I think your innate ability to relate to people is really going to be very potent. But the ninth house is where we need to be very open-minded about who we can connect to. Now, if you are someone who's going to be traveling somewhere, it could be a very exciting opportunity. You may find yourself absorbing yourself, immersing yourself in all the cultural and historical elements of that particular destination. If you're really into the arts, if it's a city break, you're going to want to check out some galleries or perhaps go to see some shows. If you're sticking nearer to home, you can still change things up. Venus, of course, can be very much to do with the decorative side of life. Maybe you need to create more space. The ninth house, very Sagittarian, likes a degree of room. So you can declutter or do something that's to do with recasting the colors and textures and tones in your abode. But let's also look at the role of Jupiter. Jupiter, like Venus, is the planet of fortune. Venus, the lesser, and uh, Jupiter, the greater benefits in traditional astrology. Jupiter has moved into Gemini for the first time in 12 years. And of course, Jupiter in the ninth house has that very Sagittarian feel. In a technical sense, Jupiter, as you may know, in Gemini is detrimental. But whatever sign a planet is in, and whatever sign, there is always an upside and a, a, a more challenging side of that influence. The upside of having Jupiter in your ninth house is definitely a desire to explore. If you're someone who's interested in languages or history or genealogy, this can be such a powerful start to this month because Jupiter's linking to Pluto, the planet of change, for the first 11 days for the first time across these two zodiac signs for over 200 years. Now, with Pluto in Aquarius, another air sign like you, that's your fifth house. That's where you can showcase your creativity, your passion, but also the warmth of your nature. But Pluto can also uncover things. And its link with Jupiter is so potent and it becomes exact on the third. And that can be a critical day, but it can be a critical day for a number of reasons. Because Mercury, the planet of communication and the ruler of the sign of Gemini, is going to arrive in Gemini on the 3rd and merge with Jupiter. Just as Jupiter's forging that exact trine, the most enabling of angles between two planets in astrology. So if your desire is to freshen up your world, be more spontaneous, take some time out, uh, go on that break, whether it's for a few days, a few nights or something longer 
or you want to engage in a new interest or hobby, it would be very stimulating. But certainly around relationships, which of course your ruler is very much about, what you're after is truth. And that's an interesting one because what we can have in the ninth house is the potential, particularly with Jupiter there, for exaggeration. And this is what I mean. We can't just say because Jupiter is the planet of fortune that everything is going to be amazing over the next year because Jupiter is in your ninth house. Jupiter is not a planet that rewards us for just thinking it's going to be great. We can set our intentions. That's very good very positive, very Jupiterian, but we have to back it up with hard work and application. So if you did want to travel somewhere, you did want to uh, go on a higher educational course or a refresher course through your work, knowledge, and you're really prepared to roll your sleeves up, you will get a reward, but it might not necessarily be straight away, although it could be. And that's because I feel that with Venus and the Sun, it's more like a culminating en energy. With Jupiter, this is quite fresh. It's only just arrived. We will see. But certainly, when Mercury moves to join Jupiter and angles to Pluto on the 3rd, that can be a great opportunity to discuss something, sign a contract, reach out to someone in publishing, uh, certainly inform people of your knowledge base, if you are someone who's really interested in foreign languages, for example, learning a musical instrument, uh, uh, launching a new enterprise, which is completely fresh and different, but has maybe an artistic or creative dimension to it, certainly a very positive start to the month. But just before Mercury moves, it is being influenced very strongly by the electric, but potentially disruptive energies of Uranus but that's in the eighth house. In terms of shared finance or a business opportunity, definitely a great time to be very, very open-minded about how you can take forward a, a potential idea. The eighth house asks us to dig down deep to understand what the true machinations are. So if you can do that, but present the information in a very compelling and persuasive way with all those planets in, the air communicational sign of uh, Gemini, all well and good. But you also have Mars, the planet of passion, in your seventh house as this month begins. Mars in the seventh house, as I've mentioned before, is not such an easy influence to have in a natal chart if we want peace and tranquility in relationship. But it certainly can help us to protect ourselves, be a bit feistier about our boundaries. But it is close to Chiron. I think it's important with Mars there not to be so guarded or even so avaricious that that's actually because at some level we feel quite vulnerable. So when it comes to relationships, I think natural uh, justice, the ninth house, being truthful is important. And that is going to demonstrate itself in week two of this month. But the other thing to tell you about is Saturn continues its journey in the sixth house very much about obligations, responsibilities, the details, and also your physical health, but the Moon and Neptune are there as well. You can be a very giving person, Libra, and have uh, certainly sacrificed a lot of your time and energy to others since 2012. It's important with that combination that you don't get too caught up in being a people pleaser, that can be part of your nature. Mars protects you to some degree. Someone did write in and, under, and said under a video, well, I'm not the kind of Libra that does sacrifice my boundaries very easily. Well, I thought that was actually terrific. It means that that person who was saying they had a very successful relationship, their uh, report or their, their uh, experience was very positive. They'd learned lessons early on in terms of protecting their boundaries and that will be all sewn into their natal chart. But if you have been someone who's had a lot of demands in terms of your work over the last few years, there is just a, a potential to be a bit too self-sacrificing with the Moon and Neptune so close together. So if someone's asking you to do something, use that energy of Mars to check out really what their uh, reasoning is. So that gives you the picture right at the start of this month. That takes us then to Mercury moving on the 3rd 
and on the 6th, the new moon. The new moon is conjunct Venus. The Venus new moon, ah, oh, it's really, really delicious, to be honest. This is a new moon that maybe we should try to celebrate um, doing something different. Maybe over the following month, particularly if our lives have been quite regulated by commitments and demands, to do something that's totally off the cuff, like suddenly waking up and thinking, do you know, I'm going to go out into the countryside, I'm going to visit somewhere that's spectacularly scenic and beautiful, and I'm really going to enrich myself. I'm going to go to the seaside. Uh, I'm going to jet off for a, a, a weekend away, uh, perhaps a, a city break. Those kind of things, the spontaneity which creates freedom will be very, very enriching. If you are single and you'd like to meet someone new, it's definitely good to be very open-minded about the type of person you may encounter. It's not so much that you will have cultural similarities, it's more if your values align. So someone who is very, very different in some ways, but actually very similar in others, could be just the tonic. It brings stimulation, and yet there's enough of a connection at another level to make it work. But on the 5th and through to the 12th, both the Sun and Venus start to square up to Saturn. And it really is quite a contrast to the energy that we had early in the month. And that's why I think it's important to caution against the fact that just because Jupiter changes signs, that everything is going to be honky-dory for every single member of every single zodiac sign, because that seems to be the message that a lot of people seem to propagate. So we need to be realistic. But certainly, when uh, Saturn in your sixth house is clashing with the Sun and Venus in your ninth, that desire of yours to break out, be more spontaneous, and just do something off the cuff could be conditioned by the real world responsibilities you have. So it may not be quite so easy uh, to get that separation from those demands as you would like. Maybe it could be within yourself, you know, maybe you could feel a bit guilty if you decide to have a duvet day, for example, or um, you want to take some time off pretty quickly and don't want to give too much notice, you may find a boss or a colleague could be a bit narked about it. But then on the 9th, it's Mars's turn to shift and it moves into the sign of Taurus. Now Mars in Taurus is, is slower really, it's more impulsive and it's much more in the moment, of course, in the sign of Aries. In Taurus, it's thinking about the foundations. It's obviously thinking about money. can be thinking about food. Um, and Mars is impatient. It wants it and it wants it now. But Mars clashes with Pluto. So as much as Jupiter and Pluto is a magical alliance, Mars comes along and we have one of astrology's most powerful uh, right angles in terms of power battles. So for you, you have Pluto in your fifth house about pleasure, joy, can be about romance, certainly about demonstrating your talents, but Mars in the eighth house wants you to get serious rewards, perhaps financially, if you feel you're not getting them, that can make you hugely frustrated. But the other area is that if you're wanting a bit more freedom in a relationship, that could cause some serious jealousy, possessiveness or control. All those energies can certainly come to the fore when Mars and Pluto are in a squabble. So some heavyweight tensions around the 9th through to the 12th. But we do have a delightful link between Mercury and your ruler Venus between the 14th and the 16th. And if you can get beyond the politics or work out a compromise, a classic Libran approach uh, to the energies that have manifested through Saturn in week two, then there could be a key moment around about the 14th to the 16th when you really can celebrate something. And maybe it's just meeting up with someone to enjoy a lovely meal, chatting about something, uh, especially if you've both got broad interests. Maybe you're going to travel to see someone that you're fond of, make it a there and back, but it still can be very, very enjoyable. And if you are chattering about something, even flirting about something with someone, 
then those can be two days to really savour. But then on the 17th, Venus and Mercury move right to the top of your chart. But they're followed by the Sun on the 20th. And we have the Summer Solstice, ushering in Cardinal Quadrant 2. Cardinal Quadrants is something you have an appreciation for because you're a cardinal sign. Cardinality is about action and leadership. We have Aries, we have Cancer, Libra and Capricorn. And each is triggered by the Vernal Equinox with Aries, the Summer Solstice with Cancer, the Autonomal Equinox with Libra and of course the Winter Solstice with Capricorn. And they provide a 13 week period of opportunity. Now initially the energy in Cancer, the host, is about nurture. But for you it's more about you nurturing your talent, your skills. Because having sat in, in the sixth house can see you so caught up in the process of just going through the details and, and being very efficient and getting things done that you're not necessarily looking up and outwards. So the tenth house is where you need to face out to your audience, whether it's uh, competitors you need to battle with, whether it's a boss you need to capture the attention of, whether it's a new customer that you're hoping to receive uh, a new deal from. The clustering of these three at that point is incredibly good for your sign. But of course it is a square to the first point of your sign, so it's not necessarily going to be without its challenges. You have to push yourself. And one of the things with that Venus-Jupiter energy at the start of the month is it could make you so happy with just chilling out that you don't actually get yourself moving. So that is a cautionary note. But I feel the ninth house, you will find that energy. But the tenth house is really asking you to move out of that part of your nature which is so attuned to listening, taking soundings, wondering about what people are thinking very skilled at interfacing in a public role, um, anything to do with marketing, public relations, uh, front of house, uh, hospitality, all those things that you're so gifted with. But is there something within your portfolio of talents that needs to be really brought to a much wider audience? And that's the big existential question that the planets are asking of you, in particular this year, because your ruler Venus is in the mix. The great thing about having Venus on the 10th house cusp though, is your natural charm can certainly be very, very important to this process. But then on the 22nd, we get an immediate challenge because there's a full moon. Full moons are when the sun and the moon are in opposition. We can see it in the sky, because the moon lights up, it's a luminary, it lights up the night sky. The sun lights up the day sky, the luminaries. But they're not on particularly good terms because the moon doesn't like being in Capricorn, it's in detriment. But what we've also got is Neptune in the mix, nearly nibbling into your seventh house cusp, but not quite. Like I said at the start of this, very much to do with sacrifice and being very available to support others. So when it comes to making a pitch for success, it could be that your emotional family or um, even your uh, vulnerabilities could just be a little bit of block of a block from you really seizing the moment. But it's really down to you. And what uh, Neptune is saying to you essentially is that don't start to drain yourself by analyzing things in a more fearful way, stay very cool. In a way, the moon in Capricorn can help us to stay cool and detached and stay pragmatic. And also Saturn's going to be uh, a help to you as well, I feel, because it starts its retrograde on the 29th. We can analyze and slice up and dice up the annual retrogrades in all sorts of different ways. Essentially what Saturn's going to do is retrace his steps for seven degrees. But he did that last year as well. He went from naught to seven and nearly back to naught again. And this year he's going from 19 to 12. But because it's that sixth house where that position of Neptune is involved in that T-square with the full moon, Saturn's basically saying, look, you do need to look at the big picture in the last week of this month. 
But it, it is also important to recognize some of the skills that you've learned and the discipline you've shown in going through the processes, particularly since March 2023, when Saturn moved into Pisces. Before then, from 2012, perhaps Neptune was seeing you do too much, being pulled in too many, too many different directions. Saturn's asking to get a bit more organized, make it come together. And if you can, use the retrograde to analyze your structures, make things that much more efficient, squeeze out of your uh, daily routines anything that's distracting you, focus on the things that are really important, prioritize. That can be a chance to make that pitch for glory. But it is true that there may be home, emotional and family demands that could in some ways compete for your attention. So this month, to recap Libra, is a month of extraordinary, even exquisite opportunities at the start of the month to shake things up, be more daring, more adventurous, to travel, to connect with the arts, to certainly uh, connect to somebody who can make your heart sore if they, like you, are someone who really can connect in a very, very, uh, a very harmonizing way, particularly through knowledge. But we need to be realistic. And you can see that Saturn and Pluto are essentially trying to keep us real. Yes, they are very, very difficult at times. But whether it's Pluto pushing you to demonstrate your flair or Saturn asking you to demonstrate that flair in some kind of workable format, they're actually in the engine room. But Venus and Jupiter are the outer performers. They're on the stage and their dance and their performance can draw acclaim. But you need to be able to back it up by delivering. And that's really the story of this month. It's been a great pleasure being with you. I hope you have a great June. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, please help it grow and do so now. And also, if you'd like to ascend above this zodiac forecast and embrace the power of more serious astrology, if you give me three pieces of personal birth data of time, date and place, or date and place if you don't know your time, I can produce for you your life roadmap report. This will give you searing insights into the patterns that have played out in your life so far, but a much more intimate understanding of how to work with those energies future forwards. 30% off. Also get your 12 months transit, the moving planets in the sky, interacting with your unique blueprint. Totally individual to you. Know your tropical natal astrology? What about your draconic? You can get the same package based on your soul, your karmic life journey. This is the energy you bring into the world when we're born. What did it say about you? How are you working with it? Please see below for more on both options.